Hello Year 3. Today we're looking at how we can interpret and represent data using graphs and charts and tables. And we'll begin by looking at that in focus question, moving on to showing it how we can represent uh, the information in the in focus question in a table, a pictogram, and then a picture graph. And then it's your turn. So, looking at that in focus question, it says Emma uses a tally chart to show the number of fruits in the basket. How else can she show the number of each type of fruit? So if we have a look at the tally chart and we notice there are tally marks and we've had a look at this in school and we know that when we see four tally marks with an extra one through the middle of them, that represents five. So we don't need to count them because we know that means there are five straight away. So if we look at the orange section to begin with, there are five oranges and then the extra three tally marks. So that means five add three, which gives me eight. So I can straight away see there are eight oranges in the basket. So how about I look at the other parts? What else does the tally chart show us? And how could you represent this maybe in a different form, whether it be a different sort of table, a bar graph, however. Have a go. So we've got a table here. Now a table has the type of fruit at the top. It doesn't have to be that way. You could do it alternate. You could have the types of fruit down the left hand side or at the bottom. But it's clear and a lot of a lot of tables use this way. So they've got the type of fruit at the beginning at the top and on the left hand side you've got the number of fruit. So it shows we've got eight oranges, six pears and ten strawberries. Now in this lesson we're not looking at interpreting the data, we're merely just looking at how we can represent it in a um, table or in a bar graph. So that's using a table. If we move on we can see we can use a pictogram. Now just like in the name picto it means that we can draw or use a picture to represent something. So I've used a orange circle, you could use a different um, shape or you could draw oranges or you could draw a pear, whichever Whatever you wish to use is absolutely fine in a pictogram. So if we have a little look here, we've got a horizontal table and that just means that it goes across rather than up, which would be vertical. So if we look at the oranges, I know there are eight oranges. So therefore, I've used eight circles, eight counters. And I've done the same with pears and strawberries. Now I can clearly see here, without having to count the counters, that there are more strawberries than any other fruit. And this is because I've started in the same place. So if I put my pairs, if I was drawing them or drawing the counters, and I started in the middle of that section rather than at the beginning like the other ones, I would have to count them in order to clearly make that decision whether there are more or less than the other fruit. But here, because I've started in the same place, it's really clear without having to count that there are fewer pears than strawberries and there are fewer pears than oranges in the basket. And that's, like I said, without me having to count. So that shows us we can use a pictogram. We can also use a picture graph. Now a picture graph goes up, goes vertical. So you will find that the counters this time are going up. So there are eight counters to show that there are eight oranges and there are six pears and there are 10 strawberries. And again, I've started those drawings or put those counters starting in the same place to make it really clear. And what else is interesting and what you have to look out for each time is a key. So where it says on the, the right hand side that each circle is worth one 
fruit, that's really important because on some data sets, each of those counters could be worth 10 fruits. So if that shows we would be counting in tens, so instead of there being eight oranges because each of the counters is worth one fruit, if each of the counters was worth 10 fruits, then there would be 80 oranges in the basket. So it's really important to remember to check the key before you do anything else. And then finally, it's your turn. So if you go into Google Classroom and have a little look at the questions, um, there are lots there about today's lesson. And again, we're not necessarily looking at interpreting the data today, but we're looking at all those different ways we can represent a, set, um, a data set. Good luck.